Cross. Hi, everyone. My name is Megan Modafferi, and I'm here at National Geographic headquarters at Washington, D.C. We're so excited to be supporting the nonprofit Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants today, which was spearheaded by a stellar NACHU educator and newly deemed NACHU explorer, Joe Grabowski. Today, we're celebrating World Oceans Day with 30 minute hangouts all day long. Check out exploringbytheseat.com slash oceans for more times and links to tune in. I want to welcome all of our classes joining us on screen and our classrooms tuning in off screen from all over the world. Finally, I'd like to introduce our wonderful explorer, Erica Bergman. Erica is a passionate storyteller who studied chemical oceanography at the University of Washington while working as a diesel engineer and a steamship engineer. Since then, she has worked as a, as a submersible pilot for exploration, research, and filmmaking, among her other many amazing projects. With that, let's dive right in. Okay, Erica, take it away. Hey, everybody. Wave your hands if you can hear me. Hi. It's so nice to be with you today. I'm really excited to show you a, a little bit of my work and also show you the kind of special thing that I'm in right now. So I know it looks like there's just a window behind me, but it's a very special window. If you look a little bit closer, I'm actually inside my submarine right now. Ta-da! So I'm in the shop. I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia, up in Canada. And this is where we keep our submarine. We do maintenance, we dive, we put it in shipping containers and send it all over the world. So if you kind of look behind me, don't mind my ethernet cable, that's my internet to talk to you. <laughs> so if you take a look behind here, I've actually got this, is a whole series of gauges and they're outside what we call the bubble, the big acrylic bubble. Um, and that's how I can read my high pressure air, my oxygen for life support. Down on this side, um, that's actually another seat right here. So if you came on a dive with me, you'd sit right here in this seat. And there's room for one more person, so three of us would go down together. Um, and there's this magical little device. Now, if you were to hazard a guess, what would you say this looks like? If you said a controller, you'd be correct. So this is how we pilot the submarine. Um, this little box right here controls thrusters outside the submarine. And you can go forward and backwards, left and right. You can even spin by twisting. And then this one controls our vertical thruster. So unlike driving in a car where all you have to do is go left right forward and backwards in a submarine you also have to go up and down just like a helicopter so this is our kind of our deep sea helicopter and um it feels like it feels like you're at the aquarium only the, the aquarium is in every direction around you it's it's wonderful right now we do actually have a a little bit of wildlife it's some of my favorite wildlife um right outside the submarine here. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can spot the wildlife. All right, look around behind me. This is a shop. Where is it? Oh, it's back there in the corner. It's my favorite sea creature. This is Crosland. Everybody wave to Cros. Hi. Cros is also a submarine pilot. And um, one of my favorite sea creatures is human beings. And uh, you're a sea creature too. If you like swimming and you like the ocean, we all belong underwater. So I thought what I might show you is a little bit of footage from underwater and then um, we can have some questions. Do you guys wanna see a submarine dive? You gotta use your arms. Yeah, you wanna see a submarine dive? Woohoo! All right, I'm just gonna do a quick screen share here. I'm gonna play you guys a video. Just give me one moment. It's a little bit tricky from inside of a submarine. Everything is slightly trickier when you're almost underwater. Let's see. All right. Okay, wave your arms really big if you can hear it and see it. Thank you. 
How fun was that? Do you guys all want to become submarine pilots now? <laughs> yeah, me too. I always want to be a submarine pilot. So what we saw in that video was uh, three of us in the submarine and we went down on a shipwreck and then we went down on these beautiful reefs full of fish and we just see some of the most incredible things into the ocean. 75% of our planet, most of our planet is underwater. How crazy is that? And so few of us get to see it. So I hope that all of you grow up to be submarine pilots and I'll help you. Don't, don't hesitate to ask. I'll help you become a submarine pilot so that we can explore the insane things that are down there. Um, you, can, you can even name stuff after yourself if you want to. <laughs> um, so I thought I would uh, open it up for questions. And then I have uh, some more photos and videos, so if you ask questions, I, I might show you a few things as we chat. What do you think? You guys got questions? Yeah. Sounds great. great. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, so so open class, class now. now. And if you want to just send someone up to the screen, and they can ask the first question. Awesome. Hi. Did you ask? 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 Did you 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it happened when I was really, really young. Um, I lived in Hawaii. Have you, have any, have any of you been to Hawaii? The big, big island in the Pacific Ocean and you're surrounded by ocean in every direction. And when I was young, um, the water was always a part of my sort of activities after school, paddling and canoeing. Um, and I, I liked working on boats in the marina. That was my favorite thing, was just to like go down to the parking lot while people were working on their boats and help work on boats. And um, the more I started hanging out at these marinas, I saw people in all these like weird suits and they were getting in the water and they were breathing underwater. And that was uh, when I discovered scuba diving. So when I was 11, I started scuba diving, um, which was eye-opening. Whenever, whenever you're ready to start scuba diving, you only have to be 11 or 12, I think, you can start going underwater and breathing underwater and hanging out with the fish. And I think that's really how I got uh, so excited about being underwater is it felt like scuba diving feels like a superpower. You can fly underwater, you're kind of swimming around flying, and you can breathe underwater, and you're surrounded by all of these crazy alien creatures. I can show you, I can actually show you some of my favorite things to dive with. Um, I've spent a little bit of time in the water with sharks. Um, I'll show you guys another little video here with some submarine diving. And watch very closely when I'm scuba diving, there's sharks in the background. Let's see here. You ready for this? Yeah, cool. I like thumbs up. Thumbs up are helpful. Okay. All right. Here we go with a little bit more of the cool stuff underwater. My name is Erica Bergman. There we go. I'm a submarine pilot and an explorer. If I had the choice, of course I would go to space. But let me ask you this. Do you want to see aliens? Maybe? If you get a chance to be an astronaut in 20 years? Or do you want to see aliens right now? Because I can show you aliens. They're straight down. Copy that. Preparing to dive, dive, dive. All right, here we go. If you become a deep ocean explorer, you get to name things after yourself. How cool is that? Some sort of like diatomaceous ooze can have your name on it. We call it sea snot. That could be your sea snot. That could be my sea snot. We can have sea snot together. Our oceans kind of have this stunning thing. Every 14,000 years, the water that we call surface ocean right now becomes the deep ocean. So essentially, we are exploring the deep ocean right now. It's just the future deep ocean. When you spend time on the water, what you discover is that the ocean, it isn't blue. It's green and it's orange and it's texture and it wiggles. It's got frills and it pulsates sometimes and oftentimes it has teeth. In places like these, like the elephant seal rookery that we passed on our way up from Santa Barbara, there are enormous ecosystems that grow up around these little rocky spaces. And elephant seals spend eight to ten months a year at sea. They are absolutely sea creatures. They can dive 6,000 feet deep. It's this alive, moving, dynamic ecosystem. And we are lucky enough to get to be its explorers. How about that? You guys want to dive with crocodiles? Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Erica. Yeah, of course. So now we're crocodiles. Sharks, things with teeth. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to go ahead and go to Ms. Kaiser's class for your first question. Yes. All right. Kaiser, hi. Hi. What are your names? I'm Kilian. I'm Jake. Hi. And in this fifth grade classroom, we're doing debates, and one of the topics is ocean exploration versus space exploration. So what inspired you to explore the ocean? Oh, is that? Oh, oh you're turning around to see. Um, so you're debating on the side of the ocean? Yeah. Yeah, and um, well, I think some of the the greatest arguments, um, I mean, both are important, but let me show you, actually, let me show you an image that's going to help you, and I, and I can email it to your teacher after this session if you'd like. Um, I'm going to show a little, uh, let's see here, where's my, let me find my keynote. So we have explored more of more space than we have of the entire ocean. We have, uh, let me pull up this one. Um, we, we know more about the surface of the moon, about the surface of Mars, about um, even further planets than we know about the bottom of the ocean. So here's a really good description of that. There, can you, can you see that? Um, so we've got 100% of the moon mapped. We know where, if you were standing on the moon, we'd be able to see you. And even if you were standing on Mars, we'd be able to see you. But take a look at this. How much of the Earth have we actually mapped? How much of the Earth's ocean have we mapped? Only 5%. And it's, it's our space station. I mean, the... The Earth is like our our little submarine, basically. It's our it's our personal craft, and the fact that we don't know very much about what's down there doesn't bode well for our long life um, on this planet. So I think I think that's one of the arguments for ocean exploration. Um, and if you want to use that image in your debate, I'm happy. To Thank you. Thank you. Coming. Um. Okay, let's go to Miss Moore's class now when you're ready. Nice boat ride. We're here. Great. Quick, quick. Get right so you can see on the camera. Get back a little bit. There you go. Okay. Ooh, gloves. Watch out. <laughs> Hi. Wait, John. What's your name? David. Can you hear us? Oh, hold on, Mike. Hold on. Go ahead. I can hear you perfectly. Oh, David is my name. Okay. Hi. Where are you, David? Uh, my question is, how long does it train to be uh, uh, to pilot a um, submarine? That's a good question. How long does it take to train to be a submarine pilot? Well, it sort of takes a lifetime, but also only five minutes. <laughs> so um, if you'll notice from this controller, I bet every single one of you could pilot this submarine. You could drive this thing around in a heartbeat. Um, it's, it's really fun. It's like playing a video game in real life where you just have this controller and there's their side of you and you're, you're kind of ducking and dodging and, and driving around. And so that part of it is very, very easy. The part that takes a lifetime is the fact that when you're underwater, water is not all one body, I guess you might say. There are rivers and streams and lakes and currents and huge transformational walls of water all throughout the ocean. The ocean is this gigantic moving conveyor belt. And so when you're in a submarine, you become a part of that. Um, kind of like when you're in an airplane and you hit a patch of turbulence, that's because not all air is equal, basically. There are different densities of air. The same thing happens in the ocean. And so when you're piloting around, you have to understand how these water movements are affecting the submarine and making you more and less buoyant, say, make you go up and down. 
and you're really piloting the atmosphere that you're that you're surrounded by and so that's the true challenge and it's really fun the submarine kind of becomes an extension of your own body um, like being a ballerina you understand where you are in space even though your body is now made out of acrylic and metal and all of this um, and so it's it's a lifelong process I've been doing it for eight years which is a while I started when I was 21 um, but I still I'm still not pro I never will be pro because every single time you go on a dive there's something different something new to learn and the other thing that um, kind of adds to the challenge is you are solely responsible for the safety and health of everyone else in the submarine I'm controlling our life support so we have high pressure oxygen outside the submarine we don't breathe um, we don't just blow extra air into the submarine because that would pressurize the submarine we blow in oxygen as we consume it and we do what's called scrubbing out carbon dioxide which is basically just a fan blowing over kind of a sandy chemical and that scrubs carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and we add oxygen in you're constantly watching these, these um, gauges and monitors so this tells me my percent O2 my percent CO2 tells me my humidity I'm also watching cabin pressure so here's a little gauge right here it tells me cabin pressure to make sure that I'm not uh, over pressurizing or under pressurizing anyone and if all else fails, I have to be very familiar with all the safety systems in the submarine. So we have what's called triple redundancy on every safety system. There's two backups to every main system. So for example, if our main scrubber fan goes out, we, we can all wear these respirators and that's a backup life support system. So not only are you training to drive the submarine and pilot around the ocean, but you also have to be very comfortable managing the health and well-being of your crewmates. But everyone can do it. It just takes practice. That's a great question. Great answer and great, great answer question. and great question. So we're gonna go so um, we're gonna go um, I'm, sorry, I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. I'm gonna mute you for a minute, Erica, and see if it fixes it. There we go. Um, so we're Miss Miss DeMeo's class. If you all could wave your hands so that we know who you are, they had a little bit of audio trouble. So I'm just going to pass on their question for you, which is, "What is your favorite place in the world to dive?" And I'll turn your mic back on now. Wow, that's a big question. That's a really good one. Thanks for asking. Um, my favorite place in the entire world to dive. Um, you know. It's not a it's not a geologic location so much as it is a depth. How crazy is that? Our favorite place to go in the submarine is right below the photic zone. So there's a, a place in the ocean where light can reach, and that's where the coral reefs are, and that's where all the tropical fishes are. are. But then below that, sunlight can't penetrate through water any further and it gets so 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 dark and that's my favorite place to dive in the entire world and fortunately it's everywhere in the ocean all you have to do is go to 1500 feet and deeper and the magic of that area is all of the animals that live down there have never seen sunlight so they're they're see-through they've got big eyes they eat weird stuff and there's a lot of bioluminescence. So sometimes, imagine that this is there's water all around me right now, all around my whole dome, everywhere that I'm sitting, and it's all black. It's all pitch black in here. And the only light is coming from the little lights that I have in my cabin. And then outside the window, all of this like starlight starts flickering all around the submarine is a bright green starlight and it shimmers and it moves and every time I blow the thrusters there's more that's bioluminescence it's tiny little organisms and every time you kind of like annoy them a little bit they go ah and they let off a tiny little bright light and so the more you annoy them the more they go ah and then you get this huge constellation of gorgeous green and blue stars all around the submarine and that, that happens in the deepest parts of our ocean. And that's my favorite place in the world to dive, the mesopelagic zone. 
That sounds incredible. Um, okay, so we have time for one more quick question, and this is coming from another classroom who's watching, but uh, who's not able to be on screen right, right at this moment. Um, and their question is Miss Frawley's class. And their question is, uh, have there ever been any accidents underwater? That's a great question. Hi, Miss Frawley's class. Thanks for joining us. Well, there have um, many, many, many years ago. Um, kind of like at the beginning of space exploration, there were unexpected accidents. Um, the last major accident with, with a vehicle like this was in the 70s, uh, which was quite a long time ago. And um, nowadays, these vehicles are over safe. It's kind of the same amount level of safety that when you walk into a parking garage, you don't think about the thousands of pounds of concrete and rebar and car above you because you know that the that the parking garage is overbuilt for that and you're safe in the parking garage. I feel the same way about my submarine. It is so overbuilt that it feels very very safe. Um, so when you know when there were accidents underwater in the 70s, um, there's some interesting books about it. There's a book called No Time on Our Side, and it's about the saving of a submarine that, um, while it was being lifted out of the water at the surface, the lifting mechanism broke, and the submarine fell back down to the seafloor. And the crew was in the submarine for three days, got rescued, and it's a really wonderful story. Um, so if you want to know about it, you can read No Time on Our Side. But these days, super safe. You're so safe. Come hang out with me. We'll hang out underwater all day. You'll get bored we're underwater for so long. <laughs> great question. Great question and another great answer. Uh, but we're just about out of time, sadly. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in and give a big, big thanks to Erica Bergman for sharing her awesome work and stories with us. This has been really incredible. And if you'd like to see more Hangouts for World Oceans Day, visit exploringbytheseat.com slash oceans for more times and links. And definitely also check out natgeoed.org for other awesome videos, photos, and classroom activities. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on everybody's mics and I'm gonna count to three. And on three, I want all the classes to say bye as loud as you can that your teacher will let you um, to show how, how excited you are and how much fun you had. So when I get to three. Okay, one, two, three.